This episode is brought to you by Cook Unity. As someone passionate about at-home dining, Cook Unity has brought a new solution to my table. Unlike conventional food delivery services, Cook Unity operates as a chef to you platform, delivering exceptional restaurant quality meals directly to your doorstep. With chef quality in mind, I was thoroughly impressed with the entire experience from selection to presentation. Today I'm whipping up Esther Choi's own teriyaki grilled shrimp with vegetable fried rice. I also love the pork al pastor grain bowl by Ivy Stark, one of New York's top chefs. Real chefs, real flavors, that's what I love about Cook Unity. Upgrade your dining game at cookunity.com slash babish50 or click the link below. Using my code babish50 supports this channel and also gets you an exclusive 50% off your first order. I made you eat your own special meals, so dig in. Ooh, it's the biggest Jamaican platter I've ever seen. Jerk chicken, jerk beef, jerk pork. Is there any meat this man can't jerk? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish. For this week, we're taking a look at the jerk meat platter from one of Futurama's all-time great double entendres. First, before we jerk any kind of meat, we need to make our jerk spice paste. Into the bowl of a food processor goes about a dozen scotch bonnet peppers, which we're gonna pulse a few times just to roughly chop. Then hold your breath because the air is about to get a little spicy as we add one head's worth of peeled garlic cloves, a quarter cup fresh thyme, third of a cup packed brown sugar, sugar, three tablespoons of soy sauce, and one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. Pulse a few times more, and then we need to introduce the spices. Two tablespoons of black peppercorns, and about a third of a cup of whole allspice berries. First, we're going to drop them into a mortar and pestle, and start grinding them by hand, just for camera. Once nobody's looking, we're just going to utilize a spice grinder instead. Process into a nice fine powder, then we're going to add it, plus nine roughly chopped scallions, to the bowl of the food processor. Blitzing for a few long pulses, until we have a nice, smooth, extraordinarily spicy paste. Make sure to scrape down on the sides and taste for seasoning. Now, proper jerk should be spicy. So if a teeny tiny spoonful doesn't send you running in panic for the nearest dairy products, your scotch bonnets might not be very spicy and you can add some habaneros to juke the stats. And now it's time to start jerking our meat. First up the pork and I wanna try some jerk barbecue ribs. First, I'm locating the papery membrane on the bottom side of my St. Louis style ribs and peeling it right off with the help of a paper towel. Then I'm gonna cut them in half to make them a little bit more manageable, plop them down on a plastic wrap lined rim baking sheet and begin to generously apply the jerk, making sure every facet is covered with the hyper spicy, hyper flavorful paste. Wrap them up tight and fridge them for at least one day up to three. Next up, we have to make a jerk style barbecue sauce. Into a small saucepan goes a quarter grated onion, a third of a cup of tomato paste, a quarter cup of brown sugar, one crushed clove of garlic, two tablespoons of honey, one finely chopped scotch bonnet pepper, and about a half cup of ketchup. For the first batch, I sauteed the peppers. Word of the wise, don't do that. Your eyes and nose will never be the same. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of yellow mustard, one teaspoon sugar, half teaspoon soy sauce, half teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter cup of water. Bring this guy up to a simmer, oh, almost forgot, one teaspoon chopped fresh thyme. Bring it up to a simmer, lower the heat, and cook for about 20 minutes until it's nice, thick, and barbecue sauce-like. Now for the smokery. In my pellet smoker, I'm making a mixture of mostly cherry wood pellets cut with a handful of allspice berries, which is hopefully going to emulate the pimento wood over which jerk is traditionally smoked. Set the smoker to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Then once you get that blue smoke going, we're gonna unwrap the ribs, and I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess marrow. I don't want these guys to be so spicy that they overpower the barbecue sauce. Pop them in the smoker, shut it down, and smoke for anywhere from three to six hours. Our target temperature is between 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So once we hit about 180, we're gonna start layering barbecue sauce on the ribs while they finish cooking. Generously painting some on, shutting it down, waiting about five, 10 minutes, and painting on additional layers three to four times once the sauce starts to look dry. Now for the beef, Kendall had an idea that was so much fun, I could not do it. That being jerk jerky. So I'm trimming the fat off a lean eye round of beef and slicing it nice and thinly using a meat slicer. You could also freeze the beef for about 30 minutes and slice as thin as possible with a sharp knife. Then for a marinade, I'm going to combine half cup of the jerk spice mixture with a third of a cup of soy sauce and one teaspoon of liquid smoke. Dump that over top, vigorously massage, being sure to unfold individual slices of beef as you go so everybody gets evenly coated. Then we're going to press plastic wrap directly down onto the surface of the beef, thus preventing oxidation. More plastic wrap over top and then we're going to fridge this for anywhere from 4 to 24 hours. Then Alvin and kick me out of the studio, so I'm shooting downstairs today, where I'm going to begin the arduous process of drying the beef. This is a totally optional step, but it's going to reduce the amount of time that the jerky spends in the dehydrator. So if you need your jerky in the next three hours, all you have to do is waste a whole roll of paper towels. Otherwise, they're headed into a dehydrator set to 160 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere from three to six hours, until dried but not leathery with a meaty chew and a positively addicting spiciness. Last but not least, the chicken, which appeared to be drumsticks with an exposed bone. So using my very 
very sharpest fillet knife, I'm going to place a shallow cut around the base of the joint, laboriously scraping off the meat, skin, and sinew, creating a sort of drumstick chicken lollipop. Go ahead and give up after three because it's tedious and you don't want to do it. And then we're marinating in a half cup of our jerk spice mixture, dropping everything in a plastic bag so that we can really beat up our meat, evenly distributing the marinade. Place that in a bowl and fridge for four to 24 hours. Now we've already covered how to make traditional jerk chicken. Click the link in the upper right hand corner if you want to see how to do that. Plus the chicken legs on the platter looked like they were fried, which gave me an idea, jerk style Nashville hot chicken. So I'm rinsing off the marinade and patting the drumsticks dried and doing a simple flour egg then back to flour breading, trying my best to keep it off the bone so that it stays exposed. Now for the deep frying part, I'm gonna be using my two very favorite deep frying fats, a big old brick of lard and a couple cups of peanut oil. I'm bringing this up to 350 degrees, don't go above 375 because the lard will begin to smoke and gently lay down the chicken facing away from my delicate exposed skin. Fry for anywhere from five to eight minutes until golden brown and their thickest point registers 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in a bowl, I've combined one tablespoon light brown sugar, half teaspoon each garlic powder and paprika and two finely chopped scotch bonnets into which I'm ladling some of the hot frying fat, then brushing over the chicken fresh out of the fryer, making sure every facet is generously brushed. Last but not least, we need a starch to anchor all this meat, so I think we gotta do Jamaican rice and peas. Combining two and a quarter cups of water with one 13 and a half ounce can of unsweetened coconut milk and one can of drained green pigeon peas. Cover it up, bring it to a simmer, then we're gonna add a half teaspoon of freshly ground allspice berries, one whole scotch bonnet, three lightly smashed cloves of garlic, three chopped scallions, and two cups of rinsed long grain white rice. Give that a little stir just to make sure nobody's sticking together. And we're also gonna add five whole sprigs of thyme that we're gonna need to fish out later. Cover it up and maintain a bare simmer until the rice is fully cooked, 15 to 20 minutes depending on the rice. Fish out those thyme sprigs, fluff, and season to taste with kosher salt. And with that, we are finally ready to plate up our jerk platter, molding some of our rice and peas into a dome by virtue of a little bowl and flanking it with our jerk jerky, jerk Nashville hot chicken, and jerk barbecue ribs. I genuinely can't decide which one I'm most excited for. First, we got a garnish with sliced scallions, a hefty squeeze of lime over top, and some additional slices for serving. And there you have it, some thoroughly jerked meats. Let's see how they taste. The chicken is awesome. The same familiar fatty crunch as Nashville hot chicken, but with wholly new flavors. The jerk jerky, while a little strange on a dinner platter, is so insanely addictive, I made like four pounds of it, and we managed to completely polish it off within a week. That being said, it was a little bit too thin, so it dried out a little bit too much. But the ribs were probably my favorite. Smoke smoky and juicy, replete with both jerk and barbecue flavors, which work hand in hand beautifully. Just goes to show you that if you put your mind to it, or if you're a celebrity chef like Elzar, there is no meat that cannot be jerked. Thanks again to Cook Unity for sponsoring this episode. With dishes meticulously crafted by esteemed chefs like Food Network veterans to James Beard Award recipients, it feels as though you have the masters personally catering to your mealtime with a flexible schedule. With Cook Unity, you can set your preferences to call out what you like and don't like, then pick a plan and get menus tailored to your taste two weeks in advance. And with chef quality in mind, their meals arrive fresh, not frozen, with chef's instructions and nutrition details attached. Go to cookunity.com slash babish50 or click the link in the description and use my code BABISH50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself.